Good morning, everyone. I hope you're all having a, a good day so far, wherever you might be. You see a quilt on the screen, and this is the quilt we're going to be starting in two weeks. It is um, called Autumn Acres. It is a fall um, Halloween type quilt and the fabrics will definitely um, show the uh, Halloween part of it, which is kind of fun because it's not, um, you know, first look, you say Halloween, but um, it has that element to it. If you are on, pop into the chat box and say good morning so that we can uh, see that you're here. Good morning, Dot and Nora. And Nora, I'm glad you got your templates for your drunkard path. Uh, but ah, I can't even talk. Bought a template for your drunkard's path block. Um, I think you're going to find it to be really fun. Uh, they, you can make all kinds of good things out of it. So, good morning, Cheryl and um, Rollin and Carol. I hope I pronounced that correct. Or Roland Bobbin. Um, Denise and Eloisa, good morning, good morning. So this is the, the quilt that's coming up, and I wanted to show you a picture of it so that uh, if you're interested in that quilt, Autumn Acres, there is a kit, and it is available in the quilt uh, store. Uh, and it's beautiful. The fabrics are, are awesome, and I'm going to give you a, you know, a preview of those here. <clears throat> I've got the kit and in the kit you're going to get several things. I want to take the fabric out of the plastic so you can really um, see it. Let me drop the camera down onto the... Um, so you've got your background white, um, a stripe, you've got black and this other one with uh, the little prints in it and there's the the Halloween type fabrics, a beautiful check, fun little leaves. Um, so it's and your plaid. It's a great, great set of fabrics, and I think it's going to make for a very beautiful quilt. Let me put that aside, and then in the pattern, you're going to get a couple of things. You'll get the entire pattern, and then because this, uh, some of these fabrics in the pattern were no longer available, the, um, we have substituted a few uh, fabrics and things for what was originally there. So you're going to get the fabric in the pattern, and then over here you're going to get the equivalent that we chose for the... Uh, kit, the automaker's kit. So you're going to be able to see that. And really what I would suggest that you do for this is that in the pattern where the cutting instructions are, I would, you know, put a little piece of fabric that are in the kit um, alongside the pattern or the fabric that was in the um, in the in the kit next to what was in the pattern so that you know there is no confusion with that if you order this and get the kit or just the pattern itself before we get started I think that it would be very helpful to read through the pattern and highlight some of the things that um, may or may not seem important or that you may have a question about or whatever as we go. Now, you know, it. as with most patterns, it tells you right away what to cut from each fabric. I tend not to do that. I will read through it. I will double check my fabric content, all of that kind of stuff. But the other thing that... Um, I do it as I'm doing the blocks so that there's no confusion. I don't have to do all the labeling and I can make sure that I have the correct amount of fabric for what I need. So I would suggest that if you are interested in doing Autumn Acres with us, there's a number of techniques that are going to be fun. Uh, review things that uh, the way that I have 
started doing you know the ordinary things of quilting what I call ordinary pressing cutting sewing different different things like that but ways that help improve and some of these blocks could even be done with uh, the grid that we talked about a couple weeks ago so anyway I wanted to get that out of the way and then we're going to talk about the drunkard's path today for those of you that ordered uh, the marty michelle uh, large drunkard path set and I, she has a i believe she has a small set too and possibly even a medium set i can't remember um i for a, a pattern that i was doing a few years back i needed the large one so this is the one that i have what you're going to find in this is examples of different ways that you can put a drunkard's path together to create different blocks and this is the one that I had made for a sampler and love it um, with that so you've got two also two um, patterns in here one is this Asian roundabout and the other one is this one that's called twister and so you're going to get two uh, patterns as well you also get very detailed instructions of how to put together a drunkard's path unit and then you also get both of the templates that you need to make the um, the two units to sew together this one is the pie shaped so this this template will give you this when you're done and this template is going to uh, this the little bit smaller one is going to give you the outside part of the template and so we'll cut those together and see um, how those work and then we'll do some sewing of that so let me put this pattern away for a moment and we have our our two templates and then I've chosen, you know, two fabrics to put in there. I I think I'm going to use this one as the center. So I want to, and this makes a anywhere from a six to seven inch um, drunkard's path. So anyway, um, I have cut my square six inches because that's what the pattern told me to do and so I'm going to cut around this so that I have this piece right here um, and I need to stand for this and because this is what I'm going to use I'm going to put that one to the side And now I am going to get this one and again I am going to lay it into the corner of my block and get it aligned correctly so that and again I am going to cut around that and now I'm going to dispose of that one or put it aside. So I have my two pieces. And once I put those two pieces together, what I hope to get is uh, a piece that looks like this. All right. So let me see if there's anything right now. Good morning, everyone. It's so nice. Um, to have you come in and, and see your your faces. What are the dimensions of this quilt? We're not really making a quilt. I am just basically showing you how to um, make the block. And if you're talking about the Autumn Acres quilt, let me see. Um, if I can see... 
It's 62 by 64 is the Autumn Acres quilt. Um, and so now to make the Drunkard's Path block, I need to find the center of both of these pieces. And I just, you know, pop an iron there so I can make a crease and see where the center is on both pieces as I, as I put it together. Now, along with that, I want to talk about a couple of things that one can use here. First of all, this is a fairly good sized one. It goes together really well. I do pinning. There are those that will make a drunkard's path or so with curves with no pins. I know that Ricky Timms uh, does that and does it very well. I've tried it and if I think about it and, and work on it and have a practice one, I can do that as well. Um, also, glue. This acorn glue works really well uh, to, you know, put the glue down and then, uh, you know, you, you'll need to press it with an iron if you use the glue. And for a smaller one, I'm going to show you. For ones of this size, I simply pin and work through it. But when I get to a small piece like this, which we'll, we'll also do, and I will uh, show you with the glue, it works really pretty well for that uh, because those are a little bit... Uh, fussier and have to work a little bit harder of that and of course there's also the um, glue sticks you know this one is the quilter select one and uh, they you know this glue works as well but again pressing it with the iron helps hold it in place a little bit better so now I'm gonna sew this I tend to use five pin um, because I, you know, I can pretty well do it. So I have pinned it in the center where those two creases that I made are. Now I'm going to the side, fitting that in, and I want to put uh, a pin along here to hold that in place on that side. I want to do the same on the other side. All right, and then this, uh, you know, will sew pretty well um, right under your machine, but I like to add that pin. Uh, it just makes it go a little bit quicker for me. And as you can see, everything pretty much lays in place where it needs to, where it needs to fall. So it's not hard to do without these two extra pins. I just find it helps me um, go a little bit smoother and I can go a little bit quicker with that. So basically I just make sure that it's laying exactly as it needs to in finding the center between those two and dropping the pin in. All right. And if you will look, I've done it, you know, both ways. But if you look in your pattern, it is showing you to sew with the um, outside uh, piece on the top and the rounded piece on the bottom. And it does go a little bit smoother um, if you sew it like this. And, but I've done it the other way too, and that works as well. Um, maybe it just doesn't lay quite as, as flat from that. Um, I just want to double check and make sure there was no other questions. All right, so from here, let's go to the sewing machine. And I find, uh, too, that using a stiletto works really, works really well as I am working my way 
um, through this. I tend to leave, and this is, you know, generally a no-no, but I'll hold the top piece, I'll use my stiletto to keep it on the edge, and I, I will watch very carefully, and if my needle is going to hit the pin, I pull it out, but otherwise I leave the pins alone and leave them in there. Uh, but I will tell you for, for a fact that you do not want to sew over pins. Um, and so if, if it looks like it's going to hit the pin as you're going over, please pull it out. Um, and I will tell you that it's very costly if you don't. And you get a pin caught down in your machine. And I know that from saying, oh, I can just sew right over them and I don't need to worry about it. Um, now I worry about it, and I rarely sew over my pins, uh, but on occasions like this, um, simply because I'm holding it, I want to go in that curve, I'm going to let it. But I am also very much watching where that needle comes down, and if, it's gonna, if it looks like it's going to hit the pin, like right here, I remove that pin, and then I will keep sewing. All right, so now I have my piece sewn and I'm going to press it to the outside. And as always, I am just hitting my seam line um, with the, the iron to make sure that there's no creases or wrinkles left in it. And then simply setting my iron down on it. All right. And there I have my first block completed. Um, and, you know, with the pinning, you're going to get those uh, nice sides and those points. And you can match those up along with the next block that you put with it. Now, to do the, the uh, pressing part of this... Um, when you're getting into these small ones that are, I'm, I'm going to put a drop of glue on the corners and, you know, little drops of glue basically along the edge out of the seam line because I really don't want that glue in the seam line because I don't want to sew through it. And then I put that right in again I'm going to do it the same way and while the glue is is still um, partially wet and as you can see it's not you know really holding holding right at this point in time um, and that's where the heat comes in and so as I move down this I'm going to hit, hit it with a little bit of heat uh, to keep it in and I'm going to go back to that center point there and press all that in and as you can see when it gets small like this it does get a little bit fidgety um, but the you know the glue can be very helpful with that and sometimes I'll actually pin it um, with the glue and then I'll go back and remove the pins and, and give it a good hit with the glue because this, you know, the end pieces here uh, don't always want to stay put where they should. So I, actually on this side, I'm going to put a pin. Um, so as I'm pressing it with the heat, it'll stay where it's supposed to stay, okay? And this is because it's just small. And, you know, the, the glue is going to hold it exactly where you need it to, to be held. 
and now I can bring it to the sewing machine and do the same thing um, except that I don't have the the pins in there and as you can see it goes a little bit quicker um, maybe it's just the way I do it but I find the glue to be a little bit fussy um, to, to work with but on these small ones I think it's worth it at least for me and I might have just um, but you're gonna have to to watch a little bit more carefully on these small ones um, moving those wrinkles out of the way And again, you're going to um, press those edges and then so that, you know, you're not pressing in those wrinkles. And again, and these aren't, there is no wrinkle there. It's a wrinkle in the fabric. And so I'd probably hit it with some steam um, to get that out. But again, you've got, you know, it's even on this side, you've got your quarter inch seam that hides the quarter inch seam in the back as it comes around. And for a small piece, this works um, pretty well. So, you know, as far as sewing it, that is probably, uh, what you need to know and it's just it's it's just being careful and sewing slowly and getting it round but i also wanted to show you that when you have a pattern like this you know there are plenty of patterns and blocks out there that show you how to use the drunkard's path to create different um things uh different blocks different uh you know, and, and also by the, the lights and the darks, you're going to get all kinds of variety with that. And I ran across a pattern called, um, um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's, it's in, um, Australian, uh, It's not coming to me right now in terms of what it is. But this is the pattern, and I'm sure you've seen it on Pinterest. You've you've probably seen it in other places. And this is the this is the block. And it's put on point. And these are flowers, a kind of a modern um, flower. And I am going to use this for um you know, I, I want to make a version of that quilt that I I want to make. And I it's going to pop into my head. But it's, it's an Australian uh, pattern. And you'll find it there. But I want to make a table runner. And I decided that I wanted to applique it on instead of having it within the blocks. Because coming out, um, this is a four inch, and I would almost, you know, to get several on each end, go very small in terms of working with a template for this. This is six inches, you know, the one that I made today was six inches, and this is four, and so it's going to make an, you know, eight inch wide, and I think this is about 11 inches up here. So what I did is I left off, um, Sarah, I, it, it's, Jen Kingwell produces the pattern, but she's not the designer. Um, but it is in, in the, the patterns that come from Jen Kingwell. Um, so eight by 11, that's a fairly good sized piece. So what I did is I left the outside off. I used my quilter's wonder wheel that I have that gives me a quarter inch. And on freezer paper, I put my quarter inch line with my the wheel. 
and then cut the pattern out a quarter inch less and this is freezer paper and put it on the back and turned it as I would for applique and now I'm going to applique this on and I'm using my clover stems and so you know you you use these I I put starch on these uh, pieces and I think this is an inch because I want a half an inch stem and you feed it through this, um, getting a pin and making sure it pushes through and then iron it as you come out and with the starch on it, it holds that stem and I can get a half an inch stem with using my, my clover and, and this these are for sale in the store as well and so that's going to go on the bottom. So the only block that I used a different color on is down here for, um, you know, the, the step part, the starting of the stem for the flower in that. So, you know, I'm going to applique this down. It's a different way to, to uh, tackle this same pattern. And so there's also uh, this brand of uh, from Morsler and they do the same thing in terms of making you know st applique stems and that type of thing uh, the other thing you can do is you can also uh, make these into circles I was playing around um, with different fabrics and stuff some some leftovers and so the balls um, for me that's what they look like and you can create you know quilts and stuff with with that so there's always that thinking beyond what you might consider and creating something that you like for yourself in terms of and Linda thank you it's the Avenue <laughs> and it is um, I can't remember the um, the person who designed it but it is the Avenue and it is um, uh, produced by the Jen, Jen Kingwell out of Australia, but it's she is not the designer of this um, pattern. But it's a cute, fun, modern day looking tulip. So I wanted to show you that, and this is going to be a table runner for the spring for me on my on my table. And because this is you know eleven inches by eight inches, I have one on each end pointing towards the center. I will put my stem on it. Uh, I haven't decided if I would make, you know, smaller ones using this size of template uh, to create, you know, because this is going to be, you know, four inches across by, I think, uh, seven, I it would, what it would turn out to be. So, but thinking on that. So if you have any ideas for that, um, in addition to that, that would be, you know, wonderful. And again, the, the glue works well, uh, if you want to do that, the five pin method, or if you know how to do that using no pins and bringing it around. But I like, uh, the ending result of, of the, um, the other. So I've, sh I've shared with you, um, balls, appliquing, um, and then of course the pattern itself. So that is Drunkard's Path for today. Next week we have off for Labor Day here in the U.S. and then we start on our quilt the um, Autumn Acres. And again, the quilt is available in the store, so I would go ahead and grab that quilt as we get started. And the reason we're doing this one is it has several, uh, well, almost every block has something, a technique or availability to, to learn, to grow from, and putting together a, a nice fall quilt or Halloween. There is some Halloween fabric in it, so it kind of crosses that that um, that line between fall and Halloween uh, without it being more obvious one or the other. And it's a very cute pattern. I really like it and hopefully you will too. So I will see 
all of you in two weeks and we'll get started on that other quilt. In the meantime, order your kit, uh, read through the pattern, highlighting, making notes, uh, maybe cutting a small piece of fabric for the ones that we substituted in you know the kit the fabrics that weren't the same as in the pattern because those fabrics were no longer available so enjoy uh, a week off in the holiday uh, here and i will see you back in two weeks